See, I can't practice. So I don't. I don't care about insults. That's that's not a problem. The the concern was, um, and I'll post the letter that I wrote. Uh, of this North Carolina beat, and the Carolina beat took my comment down because it speaks to his lack of integrity as a journalist. He claims to have a sword to tell him one thing, and he has no journalistic integrity to email me to confirm that or to get information from the source to confirm that it's true. Simply put, the lawsuit was not dropped, so that article is complete garbage, um, and that uh, that journalist is complete garbage. Now, I'll tell, I'll tell him to his face, okay? And as a matter of fact, if you want to come on here, we'll give you the opportunity to share uh, where you got your source from because it makes no sense, and that's correct. The lawsuit is still ongoing, and so, I'll explain to you what was filed yesterday. Yesterday, we filed a document called a Notice of Suggestion of Bankruptcy. That's what the document is called. It's public record, and uh, Bishop, I provided you with a copy of it. You can post it. All it says is that, look, uh, it notifies the court to let the court know that Tasha Kane spoke. I'm sorry, Tasha Kane filed bankruptcy. Therefore... The bankruptcy provides what's called an automatic stay against prosecutions and collection of debt against you. All right, so Brian, hold okay. on. Hold right yeah. on a second, right? Um, so for lame, lame, more lame terms, like for, for, for me and you guys that are not attorney, oh. like, no, I just want to just explain this, right? So what happened was, um, Tasha K, when we filed the $360 million lawsuit, Tasha K then sent my attorney her her attorney sent my attorney a letter stating that we need to dismiss the case because it should be a part of bankruptcy and so forth and so on so just so that you guys know what my attorney was saying he got thrown off by this um this fake blogger right here this news reporter he got kind of thrown off but he was going into when tasha K made the false statements about me it was on or before may 25th and, and since it was on or before May 25th, May 25th was the day she filed her lawsuit. So since her our claim came before she filed the bankruptcy, excuse me, the bankruptcy, therefore my lawsuit then become a part of the bankruptcy Correct. file. So therefore she could protect her assets against Cardi B. Okay? So now her lawyer sent my lawyer, uh, uh, a letter saying, you need to dismiss it, trying to threaten us or whatever. And now Brian is about to go into what we just filed. So therefore, you guys are getting an understanding that it wasn't dismissed. It's just a uh, process. It's a legal process of what we had done. So for this fake right. newspaper dude, he put on his page that, um, that it was a court proceedings today. And he actually told me that too. It was a court proceeding and all this stuff. It was never a court proceeding today at all. It was a filing by my attorney. So that guy right there, y'all need to unfollow him because he's a clown right. and a liar. It was no court proceedings at all today. But go ahead, Ryan. And, and to be clear, the North Carolina uh, paper and the guys in here, Mr. Uh, Gerald Jackson, he said he's not taking the article down. No one told him to take this article down. No one told and take the article down. Uh, I just notified him of the falsity of the articles because uh, it just looks makes him look like a bad paper. But uh, if you want to publish, I actually copied and pasted what I emailed him and put it in the comment section of his uh, Instagram. No one has told him to take the article down. I just clarified and showed him that what he's posting is just inaccurate. It just shows his lack, like I said earlier, his lack of integrity as a journalist. He's posting just inaccurate articles. The lawsuit against Tasha K simply is not dropped. You won't find anyone, you won't find any other paper that will say that because he simply is lying. And you know what I, it's, Brian, you know what I found it, out? The, you know what I found go, out? Go ahead. I found out that he was on Tasha K's show twice or three times over. So he's a part sure. of that whole, that whole wash. So enough with him, sure. you already know he's a liar. And yeah. once you are continuously with the fact, continuing with the facts, they're going to know 
Cloud Chaser and yeah. throw my name out there and, and Tasha K. Go ahead. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, but I didn't tell him that. I just, I just gave the correct information because it, it's just simply incorrect. But the lawsuit did not draw. Uh, what I was explaining in the earlier edition, as you explained, when a person files bankruptcy, they, uh, the law provides that anything that's going against them, it, it creates an automatic stay. What that means is it pauses everything against them so that they can regroup. That's what the bankruptcy law provides. So it doesn't provide that lawsuits would drop, it just creates a pause. And now, as uh, Bishop Whitehead said, the, the claim against Tasha Kate in this lawsuit is a part of the lawsuit because what happened was the leverage that she did in the, uh, in the lawsuit occurred before she filed. And so right, this on. is right. part of the right, lawsuit. Hold on. hold on, hold on, you're breaking up. You're breaking up back. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh, okay. It's going to come back. So while, while Brian's come back, you fussy, but while Brian's come back, he's breaking okay. down the lawsuit. All right, you come back. You're clear now. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So what I was saying is the, the bankruptcy law just provides for a pause. And because the lawsuit is about uh, allegations and conduct that happened before she filed, it's a part of that bankruptcy. And so the bankruptcy court will tell us when we can proceed in it. Um, and that's where we are. That's where that case is. So it's not dropped. It's fully active. Um, and she filed for what's called a Chapter 11. When people hear bankruptcy, you think that they get to discharge debt. That's not the kind of bankruptcy she filed. She filed a Chapter 11. A Chapter 11 basically takes all the debt before that bankruptcy and allows you to reorganize and pay it over time. And the kind of uh, bankruptcy she filed Typically, someone will have about 60 months to pay that debt. Now, what I find interesting about this oh, hold is... Up. Right, hold up. Listen, y'all. It's about to get sticky. Hold on. <laughs> we got to set them up now. Hold on. Now, listen. For all the bloggers, I see my guy Wally up here. All the bloggers, get your pens, get your pads, and your calculators, because we are about to see how uh, SpongeBob, I mean, Tasha K has been fabricating stuff and it depends out because y'all going to see how she's trying to bamboozle the bankruptcy court because Cardi B is already on her net for four million dollars. Now Bishop Whitehead is on her net for three hundred and six million and now she's trying to get away from Cardi B and Bishop Whitehead and Brian is about to explain what a what a bankruptcy chapter eleven is and what she Wow, y'all, because she's getting up, getting on everybody, and she is lying, and she's trying to get around these lawsuits. All right, stop telling me to stop cutting them off. I, I got, I gotta commentate this thing. All right, because, because I gotta, because my lawyer just tell you some law stuff, and y'all be lost. So I want to bring it back down and get your calculators and get your your your, your, your pens, y'all, because y'all can talk about this. All right, so you said sixty months. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, so a chapter, so first of all, um, there, there are forms of bankruptcy, like a chapter seven, where you can discharge debt and get a new start. That's what a fresh start type of case. Well, that Cardi B type lawsuit, defamation uh, judgment, you can't discharge that. So she can't discharge Cardi B. Uh, uh, just like Bishop Whitehead's lawsuit, when, you know, if you were to get a judgment of this type, it would not be dischargeable. And so keep that in mind. And so the type, the type of lawsuit she filed, I'm sorry, the she filed in Chapter 11. A Chapter 11, you get to put together a repayment plan. And so right now, she has her biggest debt, which is $3.4 approximately million dollar debt, over to Cardi B. A payment plan can go up to 60 months. So in court documents from a recent hearing, she claims she only makes less than $4,000 a month. And she... Hold up. She says she makes less than $4,000 a month, y'all. I just want y'all to start hearing the lies. Start hearing the lies because y'all been sitting here looking at this Tasha Kay and she's been kicking black America in the back. I don't see her talk about no white people, no Asian people, no Russian people. It's all about our kind. Here it goes. She says she only makes $4,000 a month. Lies, garbage, and trash. Go ahead, Brian. Now... 
she attributes this to the fact that, that Cardi B has started seizing some of her money. Now, when the court inquired about how much Cardi B has gotten from her so far, she said 10000 mm. Okay? Now, let's go back a little bit. Tasha K claims she spent $300,000 on lawyers to defend that case against Cardi B. And she spent allegedly about a... Uh, let's see. I have to pull up the number, but a, a, a much smaller sum of money trying to appeal. I think it was ninety. It was three hundred ninety. Three hundred. So about ninety thousand dollars, approximately, trying to appeal. Okay. Uh, so far, she's not been successful in any of that, and as we know, uh, Cardi B got the judgment now. Um, again, back to how much money she makes. She claims under penalty of perjury that she makes under $4,000 per month per cent. Now, keep that number in mind. Then, she claims that she lives there in Fort Lauderdale, and when asked how much she pays in rent, she says $2,500. Okay? And this, this is a sworn testimony in a bankruptcy hearing. Now, Later, when Cardi B's lawyer in the bankruptcy case comes on and asks her questions about her rent, I believe it was Cardi B's lawyer, maybe someone else. I think it was Cardi B's lawyer. When asked her about her rent, he asked about the building, and she says it's a building owned by uh, Grant Cardone, et cetera, et cetera. We're not going to really put it out there what building it is. But the lawyer had enough sense, and everybody has sense in this case, except her, because she, you know, thinks she's smarter than everyone. And, and, and we know where you at, uh, Tasha. So, look. so the, uh, the lawyer said, well, I'm looking at the website for this building. There's no unit in this building that's $2,500. So how are you paying $2,500? Oh, well, that's just my portion of the rent. My husband pays the other half. <laughs> talking about crafty uh -huh. talking about crafty and that's a nice way of saying shifty and lot so when someone says what's your rent you say $2,500 and when they ask more come to find out the rent she said is about $5,400 okay so so anyway she's saying she makes under $4,000 a month why do I why do I why do I emphasize that? Well, in a Chapter 11 case, you're going to have to be able to sustain a repayment plan. And so let's just do some let's just do some simple math. If you have, let me see, $3.4 million, and if you, can, if you can pay it off in over up to 60 months, so divided by 60, that comes out to $56,000 a month so if this is a personal bankruptcy for a debt that's personal to her and she's only claiming that she makes four less than four thousand dollars a month how is she going to pay into a payment plan where she has to pay almost fifty seven thousand dollars a month how does that work well it doesn't work she's not going to be able to do that so this bankruptcy is not is not going to make it as soon as they come up with a plan to address this Cardi B lawsuit, it's, it's, she, she doesn't qualify or she doesn't have the income. So where's the income coming from? Well, perhaps her channels, perhaps that money goes elsewhere. Where else could it go? Well, her husband allegedly produces and, and, and perhaps interjects, intercepts the money that's produced by that, all of those uh, gossip channels. That company is called Yellen Entertainment, Y-E-L-E-N Entertainment. That's what her husband runs. She claims no ownership in that company, and that company basically produces, allegedly produces all of her shows, uh, YouTube, and other, um, and not other, uh, and her other social media, uh, whatever the case may be. So actually, Bishop Whitehead sued Yellen and sued her because Yellen 
produce the content that basically is responsible as her employer or a producer of that content. And then that's the family. Let me say this just to clear this up. Everybody kept saying, why did you say you know where she at? Because you've been done service. I don't have to throw a none of that nonsense, y'all. She's stuck in her personal service, but obviously since she put me in a lawsuit, she knows what's going on. So that's why I said, right? I don't get I don't got time to be threatening nobody, hurting nobody, none of that stuff, all right? We be about this business, be about the money, and that's just what it is, all right? So, um, Brian, what I want you to get to, what I want you to get to, to, to the, to the, to the good part, to the, to the real good part of the different uh, subdivisions of the chapter okay. 11. Right. So, so, so back to the chapter 11 bankruptcy. So hopefully you all understand now there are two types of bankruptcy, two, two basic types. One type, and don't have to pay it. That's not what she, she can't do that because this kind of, this type of, these types of debts can't be discharged in that way. The kind that she filed, Chapter 11, is a, basically a repayment plan. And according to her own sworn testimony, she cannot afford that. So she does not qualify for that. That's not going to be sustained. My guess is that bankruptcy will get dismissed at some at some soon point. Now, the type of bankruptcy she filed has something called a subchapter 5. Subchapter 5 is a, a subchapter uh, of the... Uh, Chapter 11 bankruptcy that allows a more streamlined process. The streamlined process allows uh, a, a more, I guess, inexpensive and um, streamlined case. To qualify for that, I believe your debts have to be under $7.5 million, I believe. Uh, um, she filed a Chapter 11. Someone put Chapter 13. No, she filed a Chapter 11. Um, a Chapter 11 is like, uh, I believe, a 13, um, and that's a repayment plan, but a Chapter 11 is uh, usually for businesses or, or individuals with large debts, um, which is what we have here. So this ch the subchapter 5 can only be taken advantage of if your debts are under $7.5 I believe. The claims, the debt includes not only judgments, but claims against you, like Bishop Whitehead's lawsuit. So what they'll do is take the lawsuit and see how much the person is trying to recover, and that becomes part of the claim amount. And so Bishop Whitehead's lawsuit pushes her above that threshold. And the reason that's significant is because her lawyer, Chad, I think Van Horn down there in Fort Lauderdale, wrote me a letter and was saying, you need to dismiss the case. My client filed bankruptcy, dismiss your case. And I was like, well, what? Bankruptcy does not mean you have to dismiss a case. And, and, and he filed an amended list of creditors and included Mr. Whitehead's claim and put 360000 Now, at first, I said, oh, well, that must be an error. And then when I thought about it, I was like, no. He knowingly and willingly, I allege, falsified the amount so that he can, so that his client can continue in a subchapter five fraudulently, which which is punishable. And by the way, it, I, I can read what happens to do this. This is what the document that he wrote this on says, making a false statement in a bankruptcy case can result in fines up to $250,000 or imprisonment for up to 20 years or both. And, and that law is from 18 U.S.C. sections 152, sections 1341, sections 1519, sections 3571. So, so um, yeah, so that false statement is really problematic because it appears that even her lawyer is trying to falsify these court records to streamline this process in that bankruptcy court. So, um, so that's what's happening. And so we, you know, my guess is this bankruptcy case. Cardi B's lawyer indicated that they're going to be filing motions likely to dismiss the case, and it it, it, it certainly appears that it won't it won't make it. Meaning, certainly from the numbers she's given, unless her husband 
is going to give her a sixty thousand dollar salary raise a month is not she's not going to be able to maintain any type of repayment plan in this bankruptcy to deal with Cardi B's lawsuit. Well, so this is good. This is this is breaking everything. What I'm saying is this.
prison. So I don't know what to do. This guy is around here I get so many inboxes Bishop this person owe me this and um, I'm living in this house and, and the landlord is not doing this and should I sue him this is the person that you should call inbox him see if he can help you it ain't free but inbox him. see if it can help you I'm trying to show so basically y'all Tasha K is getting sued by Bishop Whitehead because a lot of people was in the comments on my last video. Oh, he's a clown. Oh, he's, he's bad. If y'all can't clown, then what the fuck y'all think of the Tosh, okay? I'm just asking him. I'm not trying to be fun. I'm just being real. What about her? Because to me, that's the big one of the moment. If somebody tells you to stop talking about them, and you continue to talk about them, and say fun things about them, Thing is gonna happen. He's not supposed to her why not. What's the difference between him and Cardi B? They both was in the spot. They both on dudes. They both. Everybody was on the news. Everybody on TMZ. Everybody, everybody. So it's different. Okay, talk on um, what? Cardi B is a bigger rapper than him. Okay, he's not a rapper. He's a bishop. But he, he but yeah, she was cool with him at one point. And you see how that. Turned out. It's cool with Larry. We turned out. It's cool one time at time between them. But different people. I find it funny that everybody is suing Tosh K. And y'all just think, oh, but he's a clown. No. That's the problem with y'all. I don't care about what y'all think about this man. People just don't like to say they lose slick shit to. And think that they're gonna get it. And them should have the right to be spreading false narratives and false news and fake news on public platforms and think that they're not supposed to get sued. So I learned from Cardi. But I noticed that Tosh K did not learn from Cardi B. And the sad part about well, this is why I'm really like, I'm pissed off a little bit. I'm sad I gotta bring you this. Because at the end of the day, y'all hear him say YouTubers, YouTubers, YouTubers. The Cardi B lawsuit has shed a bad light on YouTubers. Okay? It did not raise our bar. It did not do nothing for the YouTube community at all. Crazy thing about the whole YouTube space, it's a very big platform to do what you gotta do on there. But the lies have to stop. A lot go around and I know that a lot of them is doing it highly. You're too now. When y'all troll people and talk to people and spread information on the platform, allegedly, 
Y'all know what I'm saying, alleged. Allegedly, y'all sit up there and y'all say, Oh, I'm a comedian. I do entertainment. I'm a trainer. I'm a I'm a cat. So all before all cause you wanna sit up there and troll the people. And, and I know this and let me tell you what I know. I know it happened around the time you click I'm on you. I want to be the same as YouTube all the time. And it's not funny. How to entertain them. YouTube. No, you YouTube. Oh, 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 I'm entertained right now, but that's so dragging you. Saying I'm going to say about you. Oh, now um, I'm, I'm a blogger one minute and then I'm entertaining the next minute. It's not, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. You can't do that. You did drag Blue Ivory. This is how you got into it in the first place. You're dragging Blue Ivory. You're saying little things about Blue Ivory. That is a child. But when people started talking about your kid and how you wasn't giving your kid no attention and people felt bad that Jaguar Wright called ACS on you and X, Y, and Z. And, and that's another thing that y'all do on this YouTube platform that I don't like. Y'all call the FBI on each other. Y'all call the cops on each other. Y'all call ACS to protect services to each other. Y'all just on a lot of for me. Don't make damn sense. Instead of talking about the people that's in the media, idiot. I don't understand the problem. It's enough famous for everybody. About. It is enough things on the news that is happening in the free world today for y'all to talk about. But yet, y'all start trolling and acting funny around a certain time of the month, which is clicky clicky time. That's what I call it. Clicky clicky time. Y'all trying to boost y'all for the paycheck on YouTube. Here's the thing about YouTube. YouTube is not getting sued. But y'all, y'all going to keep messing around and torture K, you going to stay getting sued. You got like four suits on you, boo. Allegedly Larry Reed, Bishop Whitehead. Um, Bishop Whitehead, Larry Reed, um, um, Cardi B, like, the list goes on below. How many times are you going to get sued? And where? How many times are you going to lie to people? I read that quote. I was going to put out about, I was going to talk about that whole call and everybody being on the phone and everybody had access. This, um, Byron, he was talking about on his platform because he was in the call. It's crazy. It's crazy. And it don't look good on black. Let me emphasize the black. It don't look good on black YouTube to be sued and right. Because now, now, because one tube, well, she ain't made a mistake with the hell I did. Because one tube did something, now it looks bad on everybody. Oh, you, you, YouTubers, YouTubers, you YouTubers. No. Let me just say this. It's not all YouTubers that do dumb shit. I like to come with it straight out the mouth. That's just why I post the lives. Here for y'all. Y'all ain't even got to worry about if he said it, how he said it, when he said it, he said it. Period. And you hear it come out of his own mouth. I like that that way. So this way nobody can say, well, I didn't say that. Is you right here, baby. Is you right here. You right here. Right here, like that. So, why do I do it here? Everybody does not like me. A lot of us have integrity when we are. It is early in the morning. I need more coffee. I'm just saying, at some point, now that it's so the husband's coming, here's the thing husband be in, in the clear, and I'm talking about Charles Hayes' husband. Cardi B didn't go after him. Cardi B should have gotten what I said a long, long time ago. Because he won doing all of her recording in the studio. And the studio was owned by him. And yeah. She don't put it in the clear. And now, now you have Bishop White going after us now. Now how that's going to look. You see what I'm saying? Now he's at the hunting company. His thing, his thing, his thing. 
Tasha K has a show coming up in October. She told why she don't want, he don't want, he, she don't want him to take tickets to the show. He can't come. He can't in front of the air. He can't do nothing of that. Wiley has to stand 20 feet from the venue. Okay, no problem. The reason why she told Wiley that he can't come, I'm going to keep it real with you. Wiley, pay attention. This is about you now. Yeah, I, I don't even play no names and all that, Wiley. Oh, because I call names. You heard that at first. And now I drag it to your channel. And that's a big But it's about you. Pay attention. The reason why she don't want you over by no tickets for that, Wiley, is because this, and that means you're going to go back and report to everybody that you was not booked all the way to it. That's why. Notice how, if you think about it, no one when she talks about the, the, the show or that. Well, it's not a show. It's her going live and doing a tour. Basically. Here's the thing. This is why she changing her tune about everything now. If you go to her says, I care for you people. I, I'm going to still give you the show. I don't know if it's so out. You know why? Covering hot already is it, it ups out widely, and that's why you can't buy a ticket to be in the white. That's not what you to come back and report to you to community widely. How she only had like at least five tables pulled up. We're not there yet in October, but we will be having the tea. Here's the thing I want to know is Cardi B gonna send her people all up and through there? Because if I'm Cardi B, if I'm Bishop Whitehead, I'm counting everybody that came all up and through there. Okay? I'm taking pictures. I'm sitting down. And I'm minding my business. Just so I can get all of you to carry it back. And that's why she's wild. Because she don't want Wiley to come back and tell uh, it wasn't it wasn't past the body to get themselves. She want that. She want to be Come and start lying. And then, oh, it was a cold out of the show. And I was ready. It was good. Nobody booed me. She wanted to tell you that. I don't want to have the routine. Here's the tip. Here's the tip. I only have to stand 200 feet from the bin. Okay. Okay. But I say he's got size camera equipment and stuff like that. Right? Right. So here's the thing. If there's no line the day of the show Tasha and from 200 feet I think while I can see that there will be no line baby you can count the line Wiley already pulled up on his platform the whole inside of the venue the inside of the venue is beautiful the the place is real beautiful but here's the thing Wiley all he has to be standing where he's supposed to be standing at and how many people's coming in so now what? Now what now? That's what I want to know. Now, now what now? Now what now? You gonna tell people then? You gonna tell people he lying? All the people early, all the people didn't come, but they didn't come. How you gonna tell us that it was sold out then? And you have a whole lawsuit on at the same time. How you gonna tell us that? You gonna come and tell us that it was sold out. And I'm the lawyer. I feel that you said it was sold out, and I take it back to my lawyer and to the judge. Then what you gonna say then? Where's that money gonna go? Which lawsuit? Because if I'm all lawyers, I I start working with all the lawyers that's going against Tasha K. And, and you already heard the lawyers say to him and Cardi B lawyer had a little pal about oh, Cardi B lawyer already had a little pal situation. They already talked. They all are in communication. Honey, so you got a whole flyer to this to this event. The whole flyer. What you do when? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna say? Oh, it wasn't you on John Gray show at that point? What you gonna come back and say? It wasn't it was that pad or I fell out? I didn't do this. Do that. Here's the thing. Well, ticket. 
two hundred dollars. Uh, I wish I was out there. I wish I was out there. I would go and I would be rowdy. I would just go, you know, just enjoy myself. I would go. But I would love to know if Cardi B gonna have her people all up and through there. Cause if I'm Bishop Whitehead or Cardi B people, I'm gonna buy a ticket to that show out of my own money and come back and report to everybody on this app for YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and Instagram. Because she tried to see I was sold out. And once the lawyers get a whiff of that recording, then what? Then what she gonna do? Like I said, I've been saying this for a while now. Tasha K had ample enough time to turn this whole situation around. The same way she had ample enough time to turn it around with Cardi B. She chose not to do that. She chose not to do that. She chose a real big head of that. And he, oh, because I did that, 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 that stupid attitude. Come on. And let's forget about the hundred and he was to her too. Let's not stop that. It should be so on the fact you to the whole wide world that you had a nurse tell you what the baby looked like when Sabrina, that alleged mistress over there of Kevin Hunters, had that, that baby. And you looked like, and how you said you had that picture. He's been so there from jump. But anyway. I digress. As Michelle A. Taylor is saying, I digress. But I'm going to tell you this. I can't wait until October. I wait. Because here's the thing. And it's not going to look good for people following following. Please do not follow on step. You do following the footsteps. Following the footsteps will get you also. So y'all go right on the head. Y'all feel like yeah, and all oh, ain't nobody suing nobody. All oh, oh, clan, all oh, the do whatever you want on you. Do whatever you want. This form of and I'm at it. I'm something else about. We look. Remember, he was talking about the text and the paper and all of that. Let's go to that right there. This is the text message that Bishop was talking about. This is what he was talking about. They was cool at one point. He was going against Larry Reed. They was taking Larry Reed down. Your friend is my friend, and your friend is the friend of the enemy. All that good saying. They was doing that. And then all of a sudden, she turned her back on the bishop. And I don't know. They wasn't seeing eye to eye. She went, she went and got all that information from him on Larry Reed. And then turned around. And then all of a sudden, she stopped messing with him. After she got everything she got from the bishop. Let me tell you something. What I noticed about Tasha K. She's a user. She's a user. After she got everything she needed from the bishop on Larry Reed, she then turned her back on him like she didn't need him no more. But now, they both suing her. That ain't that about her. Now, that's crazy in itself. Because, like I said, they, everybody was cool. Everybody was chilling. Even down to Larry Reed. Larry Reed, you was just chilling with Tasha K. Next thing you know, she told everybody, all your tea. Next thing you know, she was talking about you and making documentaries with people about you. Same thing. Amon Wiggins, same thing. When it came to certain stories, boom, all of a sudden, she didn't want to be bothered. It is what it is. Storm Monroe, Storm Monroe number started numbering. She didn't want to be bothered. Oh, let me take his story and redo it again. Let me take his interview. Let me just do redo his interview because it wasn't all that great. So let me take... The Jaguar Wright interview and redo it because he re he did it and got numbers and that's how Storm Monroe got to where he got to and she didn't like that so she went and redid it then her and Jaguar Wright fell out yeah it's a thing 
It is an ongoing cycle with Tasha K. The common denominator is Tasha K. There's the paperwork. Who's, who's lawyers up there? Let's zoom in. Let's zoom in. Who lawyer that is? Brian Ponder. Right. Bishop Whitehead's lawyer. I've been had the paperwork. Let's go back. I've been had the paperwork. Been had it. I had it from the moment he said he was suing her. He put it in his stories. He said, y'all go screenshot it. So I don't know what the guy over there from the Carolina Beat is talking about. I known him from the other disappearance of the other young lady, Shanquilla. And that's how I heard about the Carolina Beat. I don't know what he got to do with this whole Tasha K thing. All I know is what Bishop Whitehead said in his live today. That's all I know. But I'm going to tell you this, though. I'm going to tell you this. Y'all sitting up there trying to be up underneath Tosh K Titty? Y'all better th rethink that whole process. Because she all she's showing you is what to not do. That's all she's showing you. All the mentories that want to be mentored by Tosh K, y'all go right on ahead. Because all she's showing you is what not to do. So y'all go ahead and get sued right along with her. But... Wiley, so this is what I need you to do. Back to you. I need you to go over there when you go to the show, right? God will enable. There's a show. It doesn't get canceled or anything of that nature. Because I want her to have her show. Because she's going to need it. So, Wiley, when you go do the reporting on her show, I need you to be in your best suit and tie. I need you to have your microphone and your cameras ready. I need you to be on point. I need for you to not get on nobody's nerve over there. I need for you to not even sidestep out of the colored cray boy. Don't even do it. Because I'm going to tell you this. I wouldn't be surprised if she tell her security to go over there and rough you up a little bit. I would not be surprised. The reason why I said that is because she already said at the last show how she had to rough somebody up or... His security, her security wanted to beat one of the guys up or some stupidness. Don't let that be you, Wiley. I'm going to tell you right now. She's looking for a reason. So you, 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 you think you got to stand 200 feet away. I'm telling you right now. She's looking for a reason to not have you at that show. She does not want you to come back and report to us about it. She doesn't want you to do none of that. I need you to know that. I need you to be on point. I need you to be safe. I don't trust nobody. And I may talk about Wiley and drag Wiley from time to time. I like Wiley when he's talking political stuff. I feel like that's his lane over there. Not saying that he can't talk about celebrities and all that. But sometimes when you talk about certain things, Wiley, you go into dragging and trolling people. And then you want to call that comedy. Oh, I'm a comedian. I'm a comedian. She does the same fucking thing. She does the same exact thing. And if you're sitting up there following the book of Tasha K, your ass is going to find yourself in a lawsuit too. You keep going ahead and you keep playing and keep trolling people. Keep playing with people on that platform that you got over there. And somebody going to fuck around and flag that bitch and take it the fuck down. And you're going to have to rebuild from scratch, nigga. You know where scratch is at. It's all the way down at the bottom, bottom. I wish you well on your success, but a lot of things I wish you would just stop doing and calling it comedy because there ain't none of y'all comedians. I ain't never seen y'all on BT Live or none of that. Comedy Central, none of that. And I noticed that she does the same thing. Oh, I'm an entertainer. I'm an entertainer. Then why are you not entertaining us over there on Comedy Central? Why are you over here talking about people and dragging them and then calling yourself an entertainer to cover it up? Don't do that. Don't do that. Leave the entertainers for the real entertainers. Don't be coming over here on YouTube dragging people and then calling yourself an entertainer to get out of the bullshit. But I'm telling you this, Wiley, like I said, back to you. I need you to go over there on your best behavior. Because I'm going to tell you this, I don't trust nothing. Okay? And you can't trust nothing either. You don't know what's going on. You don't live out there. In Florida, Wiley, like I said, already pulled up the venue. So we already know what it's looking like inside is a beautiful venue. But I'm telling you right now, Wiley, you better go over there on your P's and Q's. Don't give her no, no leeway to try to call the cops on you. Because she will. She will call the cops on you. 
And if you think that's cute for a story time to get locked up, like you did with that library, mm-hmm, we all remember the library. Don't get locked up and think that that's going to be a cute story time to come back and tell us about because you want to get views. No, because ain't nobody fitting to bail you out on YouTube. I'm going to tell you that right now. The one friend that was, was on your side when it came to stuff like that was opinionated. And we will get into Miss Opinionated. Okay, we will get into that at a later time. But you did her dirty, so she's not on your side no more. Actually, she don't doubt, yeah, maybe you might want to lawyer up when it comes to Miss Opinionated. I'm going to tell you that right now, Wiley. A lot of things that y'all doing on this YouTube platform, this YouTube space, it's not good. Y'all sitting up here calling yourselves entertainers when y'all dragging people and saying the wrong thing about people. Tasha K, I heard, was sitting over there talking about Blue Ivory. Doggy Diamonds reported about it. It makes no sense. It's dumb. This is how you got into this. Talking about people and talking about people's kids. Stop talking about people's kids on your platform. I'm surprised your YouTube channel's Tasha K is still up. Anyway, I'm t I don't understand how they're still up after all this time. But at the end of the day, you gonna you th those platforms are soon they're gonna they're gonna come down. They're gonna come down at some point. They're gonna come down. And let's get into the platform. I'm trying to still figure out how you got a million subscribers, but you don't have a plaque behind you, but you got all these wine bottles. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to figure that part out. Somebody go over there and see if she still have a plaque over there or does she have wine bottles? And I'm talking about a YouTube plaque. When it says, oh, I reached 100K, oh, I reached this K, that K. You had a million views. You should have had at least three plaques by now. Right? Three to four plaques, maybe. You should have had those plaques already. I ain't never seen Tosh K unveil no plaque on from YouTube. You know why? Because she can't. Numbers is not numbering. You got a million subscribers but can't break 50K in your chat on your live stream. That's crazy. It's, 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 it's unheard of. Please go ask the white YouTubers. They know all about it. It's unheard of. There's no way in the world you have a million subscribers and you can't even break a million K in your life. A million K. Look, listen to me. You know I'm tired. You can't even break a milli, a half a mil in your live chat. You can't even break 50K in your live chat. Shit, I'm going to go even lower. You can't even break 20K no more, Tasha K, in your live chat. Ever since you don't been going downhill. You can't do none of that. And you was never at 500K in your live chat to begin with. Which is crazy to me. Real crazy. Real crazy. But y'all sit over there and y'all listen to Tasha K if y'all want to. Tasha K is going down slowly. Real slow. And if y'all not catching on, then sorry for y'all. But my eyes is open and they are glued to YouTube. And I've been noticed that she was never breaking 100K on her live streams. Okay? So, I'm going to need y'all to stop buying subscribers allegedly. Because that's, that's not a good look. It's not a good look. Because then it shards the show after a while. The numbers, y'all just be liking to look at numbers. I like looking at views and stuff like that. And if the views is not viewing, then the numbers don't really mean nothing in that subscriber account. They really don't mean nothing. So like I said, YouTube, y'all see what the paperwork is giving. Bishop Whitehead is on the top with Tosh K name. I didn't post this, this paperwork because it's blurry. You understand? It's blurry. That's the only reason why I didn't post it. But this is the official paperwork that that the bishop posted when he first said he was suing her. And these are the text messages right here. So y'all take a whiff of that. Okay, YouTube? Now it was early in the morning. I'm going to finish working. I'm waiting for this press conference to start. My name is Eve the Weave. Please like, share, and subscribe, YouTube. Tell me what you think about it in the comments. Let's get down to it. I got to go, YouTube. Later.